This week in the boathouse, Arabella's straight-laid decking gets waterproofed the old-fashioned way, caulked with cotton and pitched with Jeffrey's marine glue. Special thanks to our Patreon supporters that help keep us going, and you can also help a lot for free by making sure you're subscribed and hitting that like button. And over in Bob Emser's shop where he's building Victoria, Arabella's tender, he recently had a volunteer start prepping the boards that we sent out a while back. And he also devised a 3D pointing system to get the measurements off the half hull model to make a line drawing. Follow Bob's progress on his YouTube channel, The Art of Boat Building. The link is in the description below. Before getting started on the real thing, the crew ran through the caulking plan on a test section that Steve made up. Yeah, it doesn't take much pressure. The plan was to roll in two layers of cotton that had been split and then a third layer of full-size strand. That seems really good. I think the two halves and the one hole, like we did, that that seems like that's gonna do the trick. As caulking got underway on deck, the first challenge in the pitching process was just getting it out of the container. There we go. This is definitely an easy way to do this. Well, maybe I'll flip it. And then like once you get it, the metal off it, we've got to get it into like yay sized pieces without them going everywhere. As we've laid the deck, we've put in three strands of cotton. So the first strand is a split just rolled in. And the idea with that is that it gets driven all the way to the very bottom and fills in any little gap down there and will basically come to a point. And we roll in another half above that and hammer that lightly down, <clears throat> well, moderately lightly down, and set that in the bottom. And then a third layer on top that gets tucked and looped in the more traditional fashion and hammered down hard. Uh, and this creates a really tight, hard, deep cotton gasket, which we are hoping will keep the deck tight and rigid and keep the water out for many years to come. I remember when this was just a cloud. Yeah, me too. I remember when this was a tree. <laughs> Next morning, Steve thought to take another look at the sample piece to double check the cotton from another angle. Oh, wow. Yeah, 
That's pretty hard. That is hard. Basically becomes a solid piece of fiber. Just yeah. And then as the planks swell, it will be like a gasket. It will make indented yeah. ideally. So if it didn't, and then we didn't swell the this planks This is the yet. one that wasn't set. first one in, put the second one in, but we hadn't gone through and set it. You can see such a difference. Huge difference. That's just still soft, flat, pliable. That's just Yeah, and the height of it hard. too. Yeah. Wait, the bottom's not too dissimilar, but I mean, they went in the same way. Yeah. It's that top one, which is the first, the first line of water defense. Yeah. Yep. Cool. So yeah, we gotta put some wedges in here to tighten up around it. Yeah. And cock that and pitch that. But I think that we can do that when we do the bridge deck and the last little bit in the stern. Okay. Because we're gonna have a few. We gotta wait till the cockpit's in until we can cock and pitch that last couple sections back yeah. there. But we can get the line shared on now, and I think we okay. can jump up here and do that at that yeah. point. In that case, I'm gonna tape this closed so no pitch falls in it, ultimately. That sounds great. Yeah. So far, we have not fared or cocked the hull. Uh, and we get questions about that all the time, about why we haven't cocked and fared the hull. And we've answered those questions a ton of times. Um, but the hull is planks largely in oak, and they're fairly wide planks. Uh, and they were air dried and varying levels of air dried when they went on the boat. So they are swelling and shrinking throughout the seasons. Uh, and that would be pretty detrimental to the cotton uh, and some of the lower ones that went on the boat when the timber was still a little green, greener, um, and has been on the boat longer and become more dry, those seams have opened up a bit. So we've got to tarp off and swell up the hull a little bit, but we are caulking the ever-living daylights out of this deck um, and quite possibly caulking the deck too hard. I would say we are on the, uh, the upper end of how hard you would want to drive the cotton into the deck. And the reason that we're caulking the deck now is that the deck and the hull, although they're both made of wood and they both keep the water out and they both are sealed with cotton, it's kind of like the same reason that your house has a different material for the roof than it does for the walls. Um, they do same things, they keep the weather out, they keep the house dry, but they live in very different environments. So the hull, you know, large percent of it is gonna go underneath the water. And so that's gonna get very heavily saturated. Those planks are gonna swell until they are tight up against each other and physically can't swell anymore. That's what will be stopping them um, is because they just can't swell anymore because they are tight against their neighbor. And the sun, never really shines directly on the hull, you know, first thing in the morning and at the end of the day and some reflection on the water, but it's not just baking in the sun. Now the deck on the other hand is very rarely, if ever, immersed in water uh, and just bakes in the sun. So the deck is, is just a very different structure. The strakes are narrower, so our narrowest hull planking is four inches and our widest 
discounting the garbird is like six, six and a half. And these are all a maximum of two. Um, so these are half the width of our narrowest um, deck, deck planking at midship. And it is very dry, you know, it's, and it's white pine, so it's much more stable. The oak will move a lot, and when it dries and it gets wet, it moves dramatically. Uh, the pine is much, much more stable. So we expect the hull to go in the water, to get wet, for the planks to swell. We expect the deck to never really get much wetter than it is now, um, and possibly get drier, depending on where we take it. So because of that, uh, we're able to caulk the deck now and fill the seams. And the other thing that that lets us do is it lets us start to put coats of oil on the deck. It takes a few days for each coat to soak in and dry, and we want to put literally as many coats of oil onto the pine as the pine will absorb. So by putting the deck on now and getting it caulked and getting it pitched uh, over the next six, seven months, we can just slather coats of oil all over the deck. So cool, my goal is to get the side deck on starboard caulked and pitched today. And I was like, there's no way we're gonna finish caulking and pitching all that today. And boom, boom we are caulked and pitched. So I gotta find the scraper blade for the heat gun. I think that's gonna be the trick for these big globs. I bet. Before we get down to final scraping. I know we can like, heat up a putty knife with a torch and do that, but I think just having a heat gun blowing on it might be better. Nice. Give it a try. All right, Jack, so you gotta take off, right? Uh, yes. I. You don't wanna call in sick? Call, call your boss tomorrow uh, and be like, boss. hey man, I can't I'm make it? Boss. I'm an independent contractor, but I scheduled a job. So. <laughs> no worries, yeah. this is a huge help having you yeah, come down. I mean, you basically single-handedly <laughs> cocked that whole side deck. As usual, like, wasn't the plan, but it ended up being that way. <laughs> um, yeah, I this was really fun to, like, get back into, get back into this project and get back into some cocking again. I feel like the first couple seams, I was like, how do I do this again? And then once you finish the first one, he's like, right. That's the layout, that's the twist, that's the trick for this. Hook that, hook that, bing, bang, boom. Yeah. yeah. It's nice working on the deck. Nice and flat. Yeah, gravity's great. Yeah, flat and even. Mm. I hammered cotton all day yesterday. <laughs> it's literally. I worked on port and um, I still have to go through and harden up the foredeck here, but it's like a little after seven in the morning and I don't think the neighbors would appreciate me uh, wailing away on a caulking iron on a Sunday at 7 a.m. So we'll wait on that a little bit. And David and Aaron are coming in today uh, and they're gonna help me pitch. So I'm hoping that we'll be able to get the rest of the deck pitched today. Um, we still have a little bit of work to do around the cockpit and the stern, but if we get this pitch, the, uh, the lion's share of the deck work will be done. It should be really nice. Some people seem to think that all laid decks leak right out of the gates or very soon after. They're not worth doing. They call them leaky laid decks. I've been warned endlessly. So we'll see how the deck does. Maybe we will have a leaky laid deck. Um, but from everything that I've read, if you use very dried wood, which we have, it's been air dried in the shed for almost six years now, and it's clear and quarter sawn, which it is, and you build the deck structure strong enough that it can handle a very hard caulking job, and you caulk the daylights out of it and do a good job pitching, which we've certainly caulked the daylights out of it, and we're doing our best we can pitching. We should, in theory, have a dry deck. And I really, really can't overstate that we are caulking this deck very hard and we will not caulk the hull nearly as hard or as with, much, as with much cotton as we are doing the deck. And if you are doing a repair on a boat or you are building a new boat, um, I would do some serious thought before you whale on the cotton to the degree that we are. Um, we're, uh, we're driving it hard and I think she can take it. Maybe the deck will explode. We're gonna find out. Um, I don't think so. Um, but 
it's a, I don't want anyone to watch us just beating away on it and think that that is exactly what you should do. If your deck is built for it, I think uh, that's what you should do on a new boat like this. Thinner deck planks, um, anything like that, be, be a lot more careful. <laughs> After pouring the pitch into the seams, the next step was to follow with a hot knife to scrape up the excess and fix any spots where it didn't make it down to the cotton. pitch that got collected can be reheated again for the next round. Now the real fun part, we get the string. 
One of the really nice things about it is how easy it is to fix and maintain. So what you see us doing right now with heating it up, pushing the putty knife into it, that's exactly what you would do. So say for some reason down the road, we had a deck leak that was in here somewhere that we found. The first thing we would do is come up here, heat up the putty knife, probably tape it off first. Heat up the putty knife, plunge it into the seams. And it doesn't matter to my understanding if it's the first time you've heated it or the 10th time you heated it. I don't think it really makes much of a difference. I don't know, I'm not saying it doesn't exist, just that I am not aware of any modern compound that you can do a similar treatment with. So if we were to say, put 5200 between the deck strakes and we had one spot that was leaking a little bit, I don't think you can really just heat it up and move it around and have it stick back to itself. Okay. <laughs> KP's saying, sure can't. Don't do it, don't, do it. don't even try. So after doing the build with Carolyn, I knew that pitching the deck was gonna be a messy affair and there was no way on earth I was gonna be capable of pouring hot pitch quickly and neatly into all the seams. And I knew we were gonna to have to scrape them and I was optimistic that once they had been scraped, the tape would pull easy. So we went out on a little bit of a limb and we taped and I'm very happy that we did because it's making this whole process a lot easier. Uh, we can be pretty messy with the pour, we can be pretty messy as you can see, I'm basically covering the whole deck black here. And then when we pull the tape, uh, it's great. It leaves us really nice pitch lines, so it's a lot less to scrape and clean up. Um, it was a bit of a pain to do, but I think cleanup wise, scraping wise, I think it's gonna make all of that a lot easier. And if you notice, we haven't got the bungs yet. Uh, one of the viewers is making them for us and we're still waiting on them. So we needed definitely to tape because if we got pitched into the bung holes, we would be in trouble. And thank you, Hunt, for making all the bungs. He did all the dungs for the deck. Thank you, thank you, Hunt. <laughs> uh, saves us a ton of time. So taping, I've been really happy with and uh, I would definitely recommend it. Yeah. It's not something that I had ever seen done before or heard of anyone doing, but it seems to work well. So we found that, although it doesn't look it at this moment, the tape's usually pretty easy to pull. There we go. And we've been trying to pull it before it's totally set up. So it hasn't, hasn't had a chance to get totally hard yet. So you can see all the seams here are still raised and you know we obviously didn't tape right up to the corners and we got some stuff there. So the plan for that is we just gotta let the pitch sit for a few days and let the surface harden up on it. And then once that becomes a bit tougher, uh, we'll be able to just scrape it. And that'll be the final treatment for the deck we'll be going through. And scraping the final fairness into the deck and uh, scraping all the pitch nice and flush.
doesn't suck. And then um, hang tight, I have something for you. Well, thank you. Yeah. It was good to meet you. It was a pleasure. You come back. I do too. Yeah. <laughs> I forgot that these were promised. These were promised. Nice. nice. <laughs> yes. you're, you're gonna you're gonna do some stupid things with those. I'm so gonna, gonna do gonna so great. many dumb things. So many things are gonna move. It's great. <laughs> All these things are so strong. I love it. Well, well thanks. Don't really see what you're doing. That's the problem. Well, that doesn't leave a lot of leeway. <laughs>